coming on in just a bit. Then after that, we have some theological discussions with an amazing author, Joseph Lumpkin, and yeah. his book, The Lost Book of Enoch. So we've got a, a packed show from music to theology. That's how we do it here, right, Tamara? It <laughs> is. God, that sounds so good. I love hearing this song. Don't you love that? I so, do. <laughs> well, from music, everyone, we're moving on to theology. And yes. to myth-busting topics, okay? Recently, you all know, I said I wanted to get a tattoo. Yes. Um, Enosian language, okay? Koharan, which is... I'm not going to let you all know right now what it is or what the letters look like, because I don't want you to copy me. But if you look on yes. Facebook, on my page there, join it, Max and Friends, and to the Max fan club, you will see what I'm going to get, Tamara. And I don't know, did I show you, Tamara, yet what I'm going to get? I mean, you didn't, but you okay. told me... About this well, symbol. a friend of mine has one down his neck, and I was like, that's what I want. Not his, obviously my own. So I've done some research on Enoch and Enochian to find out what exactly it is. And I said, what a better way to do it than to have someone who actually knows exactly <laughs> what they're talking about. So I did my research. I put my team together to go out there and search the masses. And we found an author, Joseph <laughs> Lubkin. Okay? The book is called The Last Book of Enoch. And it's wow. a number one seller, it has been, for quite some time on the New York Times. Wow. And I said, why don't we give him a call and find out what's going on with Enoch so that we know what it's really about. Because everyone was so, like, dramatic with their emails. What's Enoch? We heard it's good. We heard it's bad. Is it demonic? Is it not? Ronan, let's mm -hmm. call Joseph up. He's right now at his home in Alabama. So we're going to get him on the line. Right, Tamara? <laughs> Yes, absolutely. I can't wait to hear from this guy. Right. Hello, Joseph Lumpkin. This is Max and Tamara calling from Max and Friends. How are you? Hello, Max. I've got to tell you, I was streaming your show. I thought the piano was going to burst into flames. The gentleman is phenomenal. He's yes. incredible. We've never, yes. I've never seen anything like him before. And mm -hmm. I, we just have to have him on the radio show tonight. So we have a great listenership tonight. And I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thanks for tuning in and also being oh, a guest. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I can follow that with anything uh, any better than that, but we'll we'll change gears and see what we can do. You know, wow. that's what it's all about, like the piano, going from one chord to the next. So we're just going to dive right into theology. And the last lost, the last and lost book of Enoch. <laughs> yes, <laughs> can you book. tell us how you came across that? Well, it's interesting. Uh, I, I am from the Deep South, the, the, the Bible Belt, and uh, was going through seminary training and uh, came across a quote in, uh, in Jude about uh, God bringing back 10,000 of the saints and uh, visiting havoc on the ungodly. And there was a little note that said, uh, see the book of Enoch, and I thought, what in the world is the book of Enoch? Mm -hmm. So uh, I started digging, and I came across a translation that was uh, around the 1800s by a gentleman named Lawrence. The book had been, uh, well, let me, let me go back and tell you that they thought at first that uh, Enoch had borrowed from Jude. Mm -hmm. But it showed up in K4 of Qumran, uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls, you know. Mm -hmm. And then they had to go back and eat their words because then they knew that Jude had actually quoted directly out of this graph. Mm -hmm. Now, theology, seminary school, some of them teach you, most of them indoctrinate you. There's a difference. And uh, they didn't want to discuss this, so I started digging on my own. The translations I found were good translations, but they were using very archaic English. Most of the time, in that period of time, the authors would borrow from Elizabethan, King James type of English. There were a lot of archaic terms, and I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to go through the translation again, convert it into nice, readable, modern English, and put it out there? And I ended up publishing my notes, about 180 pages of the translation and notes, and Overnight, the thing started selling, and I thought, well, this is interesting, and that's how it came about. Mm -hmm. Now, who exactly was Enoch? Yes. Uh, Besides, Enoch was... I, I've, I've done my, my little history, so <laughs> before I... Let okay. me just, uh, he was the great-grandfather of Noah, is that correct? Yeah, and, and he was one of the, the, the people, besides... Uh, uh, Elijah, that were taken up to heaven, and they didn't die. 
So now, if you're if you're a, a strict Jew, you, you've got this uh, you've got this vision of a gentleman being translated to heaven. What was he doing there? What did he see? Enoch you know, was written for a period of a couple of hundred years, starting from about around 300 BC, and uh, it, it's written in uh, basically three major time frames and five major sections. And the one that everybody seems to care about is the Book of the Watchers, because one of the things that Enoch did was he he uh, in the you know the book we're going to assume it was written by Enoch, but we we know it wasn't, but we're going to say it was. So the writer says. Guys, this is what happened in the book of Genesis where it says that the sons of God came down and visited and, and, and propagated with the daughters of men. And the Bible says that they gave birth to children that became, and I quote, the men of renown. So... The first thing you have to ask is, who are they talking about? Is this, is this going back to, to, to our uh, titans and, and demigods that, 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 we, uh, that we look at through legend, these people who we, we look up to because they, they had all of this tremendous power? Mm -hmm. Now, there are three books of Enoch. And, and what we're talking about here mostly is the first book of Enoch, the Ethiopic Enoch. Hmm. But there are other yeah. books out well, um, uh, a story, and when you put them together, you get this amazing story of how they uh, they had children. And the interesting thing, I think, Max, is the the angels didn't just come down, according to this book, and have children and leave. Mm -hmm. They taught men things and. Some of the things made God fairly angry, according to the book. Mm, okay. uh, so they, they taught charm, they taught herbology, they taught, uh, as you were saying, uh, astronomy. Uh, mm -hmm. They set up calendars. Very interesting things. And one of the things that made God the maddest is they taught us how to read and write. Oh my! Well, you know, this is a—it's it, considered to be pretty controversial, right? In the like with the churches, did they did they somehow get a hold of this and they decided, you know what, we're not going to let this be open to the masses because part of that was about the control. Such an excellent question because yes, as I went through my study, I found out that the Bible is not the Bible all over the world. Mm -hmm. The Book of Enoch is actually canon in the Ethiopic Christian Church, along with a book called the Book of Jubilees. Mm -hmm. We don't have it in our, in our Bible. You know, if, if you're Protestant, you have your 66 books. And if you're Catholic, you have the 66 plus the Apocrypha. Mm -hmm. If you're Orthodox, you have a couple of other books on top of that. Mm -hmm. But if you're Ethiopic Christian, you have 81 books. Wow. Isn't that interesting that the Bible is not really the Bible the world round? Wow. A lot was taken out. There's a lot to numerology also, so I wonder what the significance of 81 is. Do you know? 81 is uh, the number 9, and 9 is the number of completion. From there, you start another cycle. Hmm. Well, there you go. You ask yeah, and you shall receive. Perfect, <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Wow. What little I have, I'll give you. Now, let me ask you, know, what are some myths? Because there's a lot of myths about this. A lot of people think it's demonic. A lot of people, you know, question it. And a lot of people really hide it. What would you say some of the myths are, and how can we reverse them into the truth? Mm -hmm. I, I think you have to understand that we don't even know for sure, uh, for example, who wrote uh, uh, the book of Hebrew. We, we, we think mm -hmm. maybe he was a follower of Paul, but we're not really sure who wrote it. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, you know, you, you have to kind of keep an open mind about uh, about such things. I am not going to, at any you know way, shape, or form, say that uh, a, a book that is canon in a Christian denomination that is older than mine has mm -hmm. it wrong. And I think I so. from that, you know, you have to start from a, a point of open mindedness and say, well. Uh, their church goes back far, far uh, uh, later than, than the Protestant movement. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Open up your mind and see if we didn't throw something away that should have been there. Exactly.